and we're live. Welcome, welcome, everybody. How we all do? In for the day, in for the night. We are back on for some more Final Fantasy playthrough on the Endwalkers MSQ. So, what our last cause, our last recall was, we destroyed the Telephonoi Tower. And we basically sanctioned a few people after basically giving a full chase of run round the city and learn Raze Khan. Razet Han. One of those two. But either way, we got the city, we got a good case of goodies, and we got ready to travel to the next area. So what it is is we have with the Ironworks pilot out to the glacier to attack on Garlemald. And as we have the standard number of viewers and our standard amount of chit chat beforehand, I think we are quite ready just to strive right into it. Let's go there live. Last time we came, we came to this point, and this is a long cutscene section, so. Board Barney and several cutscenes will play in sequence, set aside sufficient time to view these in their entirety. But we expect a fair bit here. Let's proceed. Away on to the ice flows. Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly? <laughs> Air defenses. On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius. The winds howl in icy protest, as if to warn against further trespass. I'm Canadian, it's just brisk. You know someone's done this in just a bikini. It's like, ah, We've get received it there. word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. They've sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps. Perhaps, but there is more to it than that. Maxima reports that they're led by Vagilia. Legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus's death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the Civil War. Mm. Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. I suspect they may be tempered. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? If me and my crew is out reaving, we charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald. The very ones we have come to aid. 
Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings, disarmament and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. Having observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments, and once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel and likely force the detachment to send men to investigate. Divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the Scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rearguard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Imperial Supply Depot... proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperial's toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. Those ears have got to be cold. Ishtola always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. <laughs> All right. Once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's Magitek with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Oh, do I play this Our thing? second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much-needed upper hand. A blizzard will help us stay hidden, so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. Trust in the plan, and we should all live to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the lone wolf? Wouldn't have it any other way. Call it foolish and reckless if you like, but I'll get the job done. I always do. Very well. I wish you the best of luck.
Let's run to the mission exclusive actions. Better find out what the special abilities are. Those three right there. Keep your wits about you. It's time. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count. Okay, so that's only nine seconds.
This is Thancred. The explosives are in place. Very good. All is proceeding as planned. Head to the control terminal. It should be to the northwest. Understood. Have the others wait at the rendezvous point. Seven hells.
I'm not doing so great. Not bad. Got through it pretty sneaky. I had to take do non takedown takedowns, but I got worried it was starting to take gonna take a ridiculous amount of time. You are returned, and none the worse for wear to my considerable relief. Only got thirty percent on the stealth marker. What news from our comrades? They stand at the ready. Excellent. Then let the fireworks begin. Boom! <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The blizzard's beginning to clear. That's bad news. We needed that. The vanguard should be engaging the Imperials any moment now. If they haven't already. Ishtola and the others are with them, so I'm sure they'll be all right. But... <gasps> Wait! Something's coming! Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages. We lose those, and we're as good as dead. I got my carbuncle out already. Respite, but stay alert. Keep the carriages safe.
A fine display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. We're fine and ready for more. What the? Hear that? I heard, but I don't want to bleep on it. Get to the front and turn the tide. Run forward, beat everybody up. Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's a terrible, terrible cold winter and miserable. <coughs> coffee, coffee. <laughs> well, someone's having fun. Removed from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. He'll live. It's nothing that won't heal in time. <laughs> the trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? <laughs> That's a machine. That I did. Gilia. Damn it. I need to help the others take her down. There's no end to them. I was wondering when you'd turn up. Just at the darkest moments. Just at the darkest moments. <laughs> There's no stopping us now. Come on, let's show them what we're made of. The
pushing a vump and away we go. We have them now! Forward!
Tremble before the sun! Come on, son, you can do better than that. Had one of those on our side. <laughs> Usually it's the other way around. Gotta beat the enemy before the overall splat happens. This time, splat's on our side. Ah, ooh. Dang it. I know what I forgot. I forgot to eat, read the scroll and eat the oranges. Dang, the oranges. Got some experience points. Did we complete complete this or? Oh, a worthy adversary. Oh, she's happy. Rest, recover, reclaim yourself. Then we will fight again to the death. Sadu <laughs> Hatun. Always the little son. That was the last of them. <laughs> the day is ours, thanks to your timely arrival. What of the supply caravan? It's doing good when I left. How's it doing now? Eh. Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. Always the little son. <laughs> so cold and unforgiving, thus spoke Emperor Solace as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kavorsi after centuries of war and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of desolation, they clung to one another for warmth, freezing, hungry, Desperate. Hated. The Chosen Forsaken. Uh, if they believe themselves the Chosen Ones, it's always the first problem you have. very warm poke. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Solus single-handedly sparked the Magitech Revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes. Far colder indeed, bitterly so.
So, in other words, you thought yourself the chosen ones, you decided to attack your neighbors, your neighbors kicked your butt, your butt basically got banished, and you've been up there blaming this everywhere else. Typical bad guy. Not bad so guys. much as a whisper. The roads leading beyond the city walls would have been used less in recent years. Nevertheless, this was one of the most important gateways into the capital. A buzz day and night with activity, aye. Merchants passing through the checkpoint, many of them stopping at the local hostelries. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. The tempered Imperials, too. This will be our temporary base of operations. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone. A broken glass it is, then. And, like all good times, the first time you get to any etherlight, first thing you should do, attune yourself. This is a case of everyone's here. Just check that. Amp broken glass. Cool. And double oranges for an hour's worth of time. See who's saying what about what. Hola. I wonder why she's feeling unwell. Fair enough. Bender. Stone Trader, Iliet. Someone's got a little Midgar Sumro. Continue. Graha and well, I found Nistola. She's over here feeling unwell. Just the cold or the rations or the solarium. She can see ether directly, and so it must be just just. I can only imagine what terrible. What are you doing up there? What terrible things going on for her? For looking at that. It's June.
It is the terrible idea, isn't it? All of them tempered. Civilian and alike. glad she learned. Terrible thing, is it not? Get off the table. Please. Where are you growing up? Jumps on table. Ugh. What are you going to do next? Jump on the bed? Mm. <laughs> well, I left the door open, so it should be just... Our present here. situation is as follows. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city, for therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Telophoroi's designs. I have a suggestion, if I may. Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members <coughs> of the Populares and acquaintances of mine. Once we have cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events leading to the capital's downfall. Guy's got a plan. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and the administrations. Of course, I will require a porxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it will be prudent for me to remain within the camp. This talk of curing the tempered is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. All the houses round here are fitted with ceruleum eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. Hmm. Got a point. My smiths reckon with the right parts, they can have them working again, but it won't be easy. Understood. The machinists will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. We've made our presence known to the Telophoroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Well, they just don't give a crap. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Uriange, Estinian, and myself have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well, now. This is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers, we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service, though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. 
That leaves us with guard duty. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphano. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhine. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in navigating the ice fields. Go to that orange spot. Ice fields, I surely love ice fields. But wait, no, I don't. <laughs> I have faith that, that you will, and look forward we'll to meeting them. you on your safe return. We will go look for them, and we will go find them. You all have your duties. Let us make haste. May the Fury bless and keep you. Yes, Halone keep us all. Is it Halone? Yeah. Ease on the end or a campaign. Take some um, cleaner to my screen again. I got another nice fingerprint right there in the middle of things. What are you thinking about? Yeah, that is a dangerous thought. <laughs> He's not wrong though, you know, optics is better than basically stomping the boots on the ground. How far away are we? Decent travel. Of course, if we're stomping button around. So, Avibos, I hear it. Up here somewhere. I don't even have to go looking for that one. I heard that one. see uh, not much you want to try mm -hmm. <laughs> if anyone 
one can find. Well said, my friend. He'll chill off them as soon as we leave. The things will be like, Burr. as soon as we leave. Oh, no. Besides, he's staying in camp. Self-charged up. Okay. Your telescope's not as so impressive as I thought it was, because uh, you're at least looking like, I don't know, down here at this tree. Or over here at these ones. Okay. An interesting take on the Marlboro. thing. Right there by the tree. By the tree. Sneak up on her and then give her a spit gear. Find that glowy carbuncle out in the open, girl. You didn't see anything. Let's 
try this again. <clears throat> oh, I know. I thought I could get just a little bit closer. Turns out, I was wrong. I'm follow girl in green again. Yes, please. Just a wild chocobo over here. Oh, this is Menagerie following you, girl. One piece. What are you doing? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Who are you? Well, not this. Well, that'd be an absolute waste. Thing I get to introduce myself periodically, you know, sometimes. Hey, 
Okay, let's see what they got to say about this. That's a great one. Roar, a terrible roar. We figured that part. <clears throat> well, let's take everyone back to the camp with us. I give him credit, he can definitely point out a cute girl. Boom, boom, boom. About that dumb. That AC is just an orange Pico. Mm hmm. Hey! Them. They even need food, which we have in rations. Some. I know. Distances.
If I laugh, it is that I may not weep. Definitely a writer before this. What do you want? Wanted something, I already taken it. background music. It's just what happens in these sort of things. I'm good at condition that he's actually dead. Sorry, dude. I'd love to tell you he's alive and all that. He's not. Right? Gaius was there when Xenos ran through his father. Covered it by airship so far, and then by ground on the rest. Tappers. Oh, so I mean, I'm reading it as trappers. <laughs> We need to go get it. Let's go get it. <clears throat> it's what we do. Hey. Okay. 
It's what we do. I'm not worried. Let's go beat the pus stomps out of this. Speak with the burly trapper. Alrighty, we will go beat the padoops out of a whole bunch of things on the way, I think. Oxen, beef. I like that. Ooh, stairs. Basis of oh, look at that hole in the wall kind of place, is it? Yeah, Garlemald, from what I've heard, they're not able to use ether, not in the standard form. So they have no magic, if you would. But from everything I can find from the previous areas and details, they were quite clever with creative constructs and buildings and stuff. But I suspect in all their thumping and bumping and grinding, they decided themselves master of the world and overstep their bounds. being dumb. Are I dead yet? Now. Done? Can we talk? Well, first of all, the guards just didn't want to play nice, so they're currently having a nap.
I ain't gonna tell you. Fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> now that we're here. We're actually going to get the... No, we've got to do some more chit-chatty-doo. Yes. Unfortunately, it's never as easy as merely kicking over the evil emperor and everyone lives a happy life forget that all the things that an empire does, policing, judging, courts, trade, all that comes crumbling down. And without, without someone to restore it, what do you do? We need to trade for it. I thought so. Just give me a bottle because this. What's the bet that? What's the absolute bets that this is this way? Well, companions level differently to everything else, for anyone wanting to know. They're always at max level, whichever your level is. <clears throat> it's their skills that come thereafter. These which are determined by their rank. I've got, you know, ten attackers and four defender. Someone else is also running around with their chocobos out. And why not? Wow, it's only been half an hour. You look over at time and you realize how much time has actually gone by and how far you've really gone. <clears throat> I guess it was, you know, I guess the saying goes right. Time flies when you're having fun. Or intrigued, or this. <clears throat> Reminds me of my nephew. Turned around and said, well, you know, 
looked at the clock and said, well, looks no time's gone by at all. My response to that was, I guess you're not having fun then. <laughs> and now Alphino is missing. Radio's missing. Kind of figured that. Nothing spectacular there. Not seeing any spickle sparkles there. Some people are always going to be that way. Their hearts are closed, their minds numb. Well, you two deal with these three dingbats. I'll go track her down. Alizley is getting a solid kick. Same with Alphano. Knock him out. Yep. Time to track her back across the ice and snow. Good. Dumbass. Alright, this guy's helping us. Yep, we're gonna punch him in the face. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ceruleum Sprite. the trail. Actually trying to cross the piece. Right along that line there somewhere would be the next one. People already on the end game stuff. Oh, you know, fair enough. If you sat down and I just went hardcore, maybe I was late, and um, played the Badoo out of it. Oh, okay, let me jump up there. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
I suspect about here. Dumbest place to go. Get that out of there, make it for the rig. You're the wrong kind of sparkle over there. Your sister hurt. Monster attacking girl, purple ring thing. Resurrection magic, and yet it won't work on this. trail. We found one. They were attacked. Were. No. <gasps> Why? Why wouldn't they... Accept our help. Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course, I didn't believe it, but Licinia and her sister did. 
Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. Mm, nope. But I want to understand. So I'm going to borrow this for a while, if that's all right. You had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers, invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow. That is the way of the world. They're so... No, Alizé. People are so tied up in their propaganda. They believe such things to be true without our recognizing, without being able to question it. We'll do things you would seem quite crazy. No, they would just die the same. Insight I can add to this is if we'd come with Lucina herself. With Lucina herself, it may have been a different uh, point. Have a Garlean, Maxima. station platform now. Seventy seven to the north, huh? Eighty six, so it's not that much further to the north. Automated 
death machine. Hopeless, is it? North. It's this way. There it is. That'll be enough for now. We'll come back to the spot once we actually have the proper attunement points, but let's sneak back out of here. of the cliff over there instead of you know running around the long way we just like went down that side right there We found a group of survivors. Amongst them, a pair of girls. Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's Spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister, please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. Joy. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Uh. Fighting broke out in the capital, where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. 
Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless something or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. Asians. Always Asians. It brings to mind events at the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Illidibus, what better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. While some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. <laughs> Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. <laughs> Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. Yes. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soskalvis is murdered. The Xenos, no doubt. We knew it was. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius Van Belsar, is named the murderer. She is. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession, and in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. What? I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory. And that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. Huh. Playing both sides. I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacias. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varus giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. Oh, monkey's redoing that one, are we? This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. Get that a radio. picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. 
No wonder Licinia kept it close. My friends, I must speak with you. Uh oh. A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. I'm surprised. I think we do. I'm surprised Magni didn't beat the stuff out of him. <laughs> Who do we have here? Garleans? Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius. A Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pier Norbanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know. And that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. <clears throat> if it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. Oh, I'm going. He's going. I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... Maxima, Lucinda, neither of you two. Please allow me and Alize to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Garleans face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. You two want a second chance. <laughs> I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. A couple of children and what? A cell sword? Is this an insult? Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. just me on my own. I don't see a point to stop for a pause, so let's keep on going.
I agree. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Little station four, not three, not five, four. Not the hardest either. Good old run in the snow is always a bit of fun. Up, 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 up. of this mechanic once they introduced it in the cities. It's like, we can run after people and do this. Boy. No, they're in the city over by the Ether Lake. says they had to have sense.
train. Tug, 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 tug. Oh, come on, get off this thing. Looks like we're not being followed. Or train. Oh, aren't you just a pain in the butt? Out here, somewhere down here. So close that is right, I can't see it. I should be right on top of it, just about.
There must be something inside here. That ether light is right there. Don't care. I'm gonna find it. There's a tunnel going down underneath that somewhere. An elevator. It's underground. Just like how the one in there is under the ocean. Grungy, grow, grow, grow. Run, 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 run. Uh huh. Part of the party. Okay. He's gonna close the door on us and think he's all that. Look, I captured these people. Captured nobody. There seems to be someone sitting on the train stairs. Before I talk to anybody, he's right, is not responding. Of course, it isn't. Still got that bottle of cerulean, don't we? If this is Nero, I'm going to slap him. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure he's banished from here. seen him before. I have a funny feeling he'll know who I am. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The First? I had no idea you had survived.
We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Our fights with the damn tower. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. Uh, it was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. You kicked down our door, dum-dums. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. God damn. Oh. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. Once they're no longer a threat, you can go back to sneering in the... After compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? that we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not. Come with the sword and the boot. Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. 
For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. No, we're leaving. Oh, come on. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up. As by dawn, you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment. But there is one condition. Collar them. Like this. You realize I can kick your asses six ways of Sunday. What are these? Bombs. Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. You didn't come to join. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Even if he allowed himself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No, if he refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? You know, some of us would like to continue living on this planet. You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir. Besides, it ruined my glamour. Get that stuff away from me. Um, 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 um. Hurrah! Not bad.
information. Have ya? Uh oh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah. We do it daily. What can we say? My friends got all beat the crap out of. You realize you guys were in occupying our. Maybe it was selling. Absolutely pooped right up the poopler. Learn anything of note? Yeah, they're wounded, the third kicked their butt. Goodness. I suppose. in the cold dark on the table. Uh, speak with the guy in the green dot over his head. Him.
Don't I still have that bottle from the... Dumb. No, he's gonna throw it back in his face. Of course not. Murder some stuff. Death and destruction. It's sort of like I got that point of terribility. Silly people being silly, doing silly, silly things. No, oh, we'll suffer through it ourselves. If... And you will always get that kind of person. Clever, or because it's right, because it's always the way it will turn out. Salvage as much as you can from these machines. Their fuel tanks run well.
Ah, nope, somewhere else. Slide in a children's slide. I do it. Run up the slide. And down. How to do it. slide. Some, you know, Garlem all got booted out of their original lands. It's like understandable. You, you tried to do some dirty thing in the past, and you got your butt handed to do you. Because you got your butt handed to you, you've been butt hurt ever since. Going for a swim. Thank you. 
Actually, my auto heal should do just fine. Hey, found it. Can't you do it? I'm getting in here to stand over there in the corner. Nothing! Thank you. You're bloody cold. Get out of the water, Dumb Dumb. Oh, we're fine. Oh, crap. If that was it, I could just whip back to the friggin'. Realize, I'm just gonna. <sighs> you realize you're just gonna get tempered by the Tlaferoi. You do know that, right? Attack the tower with what? No, 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 no. You realize why 
you didn't get turned into the same mindless ding-dongs that are out there, right? You do know, right? Our fate did know. Oh, God. The radios. Not the radios. The tower is a corrupting influence. Four unknowns. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. The gauge is damaged. Blah, blah, blah. Find the tank. It's not the Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you only got two problems here, my dude. And that is all the tanks that are on the ground basically all have the same reading on them. Amavate. We're gonna big E, just go with that big L that you've got. Ah. <laughs> Can't get up there. Maybe we should stand back. You would think these were ground target, but they're not. They're basically use a point blank. In a sure shot. In Kodama. Stretch. Good stretch. Don't leave me standing alone out here in the street. Finally escaped the watchful gaze of your keepers, Hadley. 
Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of us scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged some time later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. <laughs> I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly, but thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. It's a poor attempt at humor. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. But, sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. The time for action. What did he mean by that? He's going to go do something stupid. I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitek, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question.
Will they ever escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alize are to stay here, as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now. Keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. Get them out of here. You realize I'm going to stomp your magic deck. You realize I'm going to stomp your idiot magic deck going to stomp you, and I'm coming back, and I'm going to put that point electric collar on your nuts. I got the booting these people in the boot always seems just a bit rough sometimes. It really does. But dumb people who believe propagandist things often need a kick in the pants. I'm not ill reminded of Germany. At the end of the Second World War, the people fighting tooth and nail for what literally was the fact that their side started it all. And somehow, they the heroes of a story. 
in the end, people only believe what they had to believe. Short distance from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm to be here. I'm to be here. Right there. That shit's his own home. The house that I came. Okay. The glowing white one. His home, his family, dead by there. This is my home. Ah, uh, home. Was. Your home. At least it was, until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister, they were still inside. But they weren't themselves, and they... They tried to. And I had to. I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning. To somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. I promised. Garlean flag bears a chain. The bonds between our countrymen. No, it means you're enslaved. A red link at its center. The blood of the fallen. Our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. Gassian's trying to reclaim the forge. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? You didn't have to turn to your gods. You said to turn to us. I'm sorry. Forget I spoke. We should go. One of the suffering you've been parted on nations such as Doma, Alamigo. The Gudanians that you killed. It's no use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do.
Speed it up. Bruce it down. Come on, two more over. It's so cold. <laughs> Painfully so. Unbearably. I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlean rule. It wasn't rule, it was change. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United as one people. One race cleansed of imperfections. A cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention. Always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people, and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos. Searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. Truths are terrible. We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems. And the most efficient way of solving them? To reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone. A cloud, a cloud. A flower, no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man. Divided according to race, creed, or allegiance, and to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth. But what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics. To see people as individuals, with their own hopes and dreams. Good. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. Hmm. But it only spurs me onward, to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. Yes. All of our supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. 
I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand, to refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You're not that different after You've all. You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Correct. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn and strong. Stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you. Or give you a thick ear. Maybe both, for good measure. <laughs> Thank you, Alizé. <laughs> you asking the wrong people. The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. Uh-oh. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus, and I wish to speak with him in person. He's gonna do something stupid. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. And beat up the thing. Yep. Ambush! More are coming! Make ready! They can't have a lot of fuel in them. We, the loyal soldiers of the First Legion, Proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varys, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Stop, both of you! This child may be the worst emissary I have ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. 
They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th, and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turn to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies. Every word. It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord? What... What are your orders? Stand down. <sighs> Inform her that we will honor the tenth decision. Bereft of hope and now dignity. I release you from your duty, all of you. The fact that they run off once released of duty... We... I take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. What do you do? Chop your own head off? It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united. Of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I. Memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished. Yep. before it's too late. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I suspect not. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash. No fear of that. No objections there. All righty, we're going to take a quick side moment here for a quick half moment because unfortunately the tea that I decided to have has decided it wants to escape now. <laughs> as terrible as all things go. So, we'll just see if we wind up with that. Yes, we did. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do a quick little be right back. And we'll just play a little jazz while we just quickly race back and forth.
Oh, and we go back to game now. zip a doo Not too long. Just enough to basically make a mess of things. Well. Get this hands up. Well, gunfire's coming at you. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> nope, don't have enough air takeoff yet. Move it to the north. Like in here, probably. being put these VODs up on YouTube in the short time. The first three episodes, though, I recorded as MKV files instead of MP5. Goofy, I know. Turns out that uh, to convert them took a lot longer than I was anticipating with the toy that I have to do so. Yeah. Because it took so much longer, I basically spent the last three days basically pounding out videos and uploading them there. Not enough. No editing, mind you, just conversion and upload. Loads of fun. So this time we're going to record it in MP5 or 5 MP. It's not until the next 20 years, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no. But anyway, the point is we'll be uploading them, but I'm waiting 24 hours just because YouTube is YouTube. And although I use music from Endemic Sound, so I shouldn't get copyright struck or anything weird like that. We leave it for 24 hours and then put it up. So, come Tuesday, episodes 1, 2, and 3 will be available on YouTube to watch on your own conveniences or thereabouts. And this episode will go up, of course, Wednesday. So, all those on YouTube that catch along with this episode wondering what it took so long, why did 3 come, and then there was a whole day before the 4th episode, the explanations are now in. Okay. And you know, we play here on Twitch. Meet me on the channel, it's linked in below. And um, no, generally we have a good old time, a bit of fun. Uh, just a casual playthrough, I do some other stuff. up so that I've got the chat speak on one and this on the other. And I just sometimes will disappear the cursor right across into the other screen and then back again. It's just like it's terrible. But it is what it is. So, as I said, you want to catch me live, currently I'm broadcasting 1 to about 3.45 Monday, Thursday. You insignificant in great. Uh, <clears throat> missing a few bits and pieces.
your uh, commanding officer. No, no, he wouldn't. He did. Yeah, he would. Drilled that into your head, haven't they? Julius is going to have it the hardest. After all, he, uh, turned to his then boss to basically cover detail everything. lost his duty in himself. Many people here want to go home, want a place to basically live. I realize people can find a terrible place. One more. 
Is that a blow up to happen, huh? Oh, 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 oh. And we have a blue quest. And we have a blue quest. He's also probably the only person out here. <laughs> Easy to recognize. He's the kid with the, the uh, blue hair. The fact he's a kid out here should be more than enough to spot him. Hey! Terrible, 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 I know. I suspect, basically... Let's speed this up a little bit. Looking for you. Come on. It was not looking this way. It was not looking this way. Dirty, dirty, dirty thing.
No, you're up to no good. I'm going home. Blah, 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 blah. Seriously, it's just like, hi, how you doing? Yeah, fuck you. B U C K, fuck you. I think you prefer the BSG version, the original, of course, where it was frack. You know, frack this and frack that. A giant pile of Felder carp. A good piece of nonsense words so that they could basically get away with swearing without actually swearing on national television. <clears throat> I think we'll call it a quit after we actually get this quest. Do this quest right. Go, go, go. You know, the funny thing is, I bet you two to one he'd spot you if you were even in a ninja stealth. and be like, ninja, I'll banish you all. Be like, I see you, I see you, I still see you.
this can't be. The house is all gone. Your home is toast, kid. No! Our table! We know how that one turned out, didn't we? <laughs> oh, kid. I appreciate you don't understand what's going on. Yeah, telling to like you will not believe it. What are you doing? All right, come on. Go the bow. Machine's going to beat me up. Right, I better speak to which. That's pretty close, actually. somewhere. Oh, we'll run a little bit longer today. We'll get this ether point, we'll whip back, and we'll call it there, I think. Hey, just because I haven't had enough of that kid nut. I'm going to turn that quest in. Let's go back. This, but first... that ether light turn in this quest and then I will quickly finish that and end here. There it is. It's got, ah, an ether current. Oh wait, that's just it's no wind sprites, my friend. It's no wind sprites. Probably was an ether current who spotted it. Everyone won't mind if I go a little bit long just to watch the end of this. Bonk. Oh, 
Now the only quests we're really going to break out and do, of course, are going to be the ones that have a... with facings. Just grind that rail with the front bumper. It's terrible. Like I say, some quests will run long on, some quests will run short on. The simple point to it all comes down to the same thing. It's just how far we know we get to. Some quests sometimes are going to run pretty much right on the mark. Other quests were going to run long, other quests were going to run short. Like, for instance, we knew there was going to be at least 20 30 minutes to run. We usually try to end about 45 or thereabouts. I think we'll actually call it here because we do still have that other quest but we've completed what we need to and I have a feeling this is going to take at least 10-20 minutes to complete. Fortunately, things that need cooking need cooking. A real life culinary skill needs to be practiced here. To that point, we'll need to take a look at it. Now, anyway, let's take a look at this. Nice hat. But really, it's a replay of. It's nice. It's a recolor of the Shire, though. The ones from Idle Shire. I do not like those boots. I know they're not boots, but still, not fondness of the thigh boots either. Just doesn't look right. Yeah, basically, it's the Idle Shire set recolored for this eighty-two. That's not bad. All right, then. Then, once more, we will 
have to call it here, I think. We will go back into Double Tom Tom Chat. And um, we're just going to call it there. We're at our time. Hurrah. We've made it to the end of a broadcast. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we come to the end of time, we will go into it furthermore. So, you know. <laughs> so, from here, from this point onward, we'll continue our quest tomorrow, same time, start around about 1 o'clock. When the broadcast actually starts, we will start up the stream a little bit earlier. Again, the stream here won't be up on the actual YouTubes till about Wednesday, because we've got to get the other three, and we only got those up last night. So they've got to be up 24 hours before I'll take them out of the unlisted stage to put them on the main point, just because, like I said, YouTube's YouTube. Any copywriting, goofball things that are going to throw at me, you know, like I said, Endemic should handle it nicely. But, hey, this is YouTube we're talking about. So, again, at just the same time, same channel, same place. And that, thank you for tuning in if you tuned in. Thanks for popping along if you popped along. And we will see you next time. Next time, same channel, same place, same people, same jokes. I know, I'm terrible with them, aren't I? Goodbye, all.